the organization that supports Hillary Clinton, founded by Dr. Nathanson, what they don't even, what they don't even realize is that two months after Roe v. Wade, just two months, Dr. Nathanson had quit running the largest abortion center in New York City. They were killing 800 babies a week, probably pretty close to the Trump Tower that had been standing back then. I mean, New York City, Manhattan. He quit. He became the chief of obstetrics at St. Luke's Hospital in New York City. And they rolled in a brand new technology. Two months after growth. And that new technology was real-time ultrasound. And the father of the modern-day abortion industry looked at what he saw, looked, looked at the baby in the womb, smiling, she was sucking her thumb, she was wiggling her toes. She. She. And later he, and later she, and later he. He saw his second patient, and he recognized the humanity of a whole bracket of people that he had helped shirk the humanity from. And Dr. Nathanson, in a relatively short period of time, became pro-life to a second anniversary. <laughs> On the second anniversary of Roe, he submitted his resignation letter to NARAL. I'm the only person in the United States of America, other than his widow and the NARAL board of directors, who has that resignation letter. And in it, he says, what if we've been wrong? What an incalculable injustice would have occurred. My friends, we must first get life right. And I'm telling you now, with the courage and the boldness of Donald J. Trump, if he knew what I knew about this abortion industry, it would crush the Democrat Party. We would see a Republican Party, the Frederick Douglass Party, the Lincoln Party, black, yellow, 